Sports fans, it is summer in Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Rick Heath. With me, Al Eschback. Al, it's summer in Oklahoma, and we're summering on the patio of Louie's Bar and Grill here on 89th and Western. What a great place. Get a little Raytones out here. Get some Raytones, got some cold beers coming, got great food. All the food at Louie's, under $10, great drink specials, all that available at all your neighborhood Louie's Grill and Bars. But out in the summer, people start thinking about, especially Oklahoma fans, start thinking about OU football. Absolutely. After the fourth, it becomes OU football. How are we going to do this year? So in that vein, we're going to talk a little OU football for the uh, viewers out there. And, and right now, Al, you look at it, OU's got a very tough non-conference schedule. Yeah, it does. Uh, you got Louisiana Monroe, uh, a team that gave some big boys uh, fits last year. Of course, you go to Notre Dame, and the Notre Dame game last year was OU the Sugar Bowl. You don't play that game, you play in Florida in the Sugar Bowl, you beat Florida, everybody's happy. If you play tough non-conference, you better win. It does you no good at all. Well, especially the way things are are, are run out in the in the BCS, which is now no longer going to be a part of it after this year. You know, so you know it doesn't really pay to play a tough non-conference schedule. But I like Bob Stoops and Castiglione. Yep. They're, they're going to play them anyway. They're going to play them anyway. Again, the key is winning. Yeah, you got to win, and that's going to be a tough thing to do with the non-conference schedule. You know, going to Notre Dame, but you know. Louisiana Monroe is a tough, uh, tough opponent to open up with. They went into Razorback country last year in Fayetteville and beat Arkansas. Yeah, and uh, especially you open up with a, a new quarterback, so you don't know quite what you're going to get. Probably Blake Bell will be the starter, uh, so you don't quite know what you're going to get with new quarterback. Well, you know, last year when they go to UTEP, I mean, they didn't know what, what they were going to do, and they had a returning quarterback from three years. So, I mean, you know, that first game's always been a bit of a crapshoot for Oklahoma anyway, and, and at home, 6 o'clock kickoff. Now they have named, named that at 6 o'clock kickoff for Tulsa. And, uh, six, Tulsa's 11 a.m. kickoff. Oh, Tulsa 11. It's West Virginia that's at 6 o'clock. Absolutely. And then Notre Dame's a national game at 2.30. So, but we'll talk more about the conference schedule and the non-conference schedule on the OU Football Preview Show summer version here live from Louis 89th and Western. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back to the summer version of the OU Football Preview Show. Talking a little bit about the non-conference schedule here with Al Eschback, Rick Heath with you from Louis Grilling Bar on 89th and Southwestern Oklahoma City. Louis all over the metro area. You got 22 of them now, Al. All over, great place to come. No food, uh, uh, over $10 and great drink specials also. Pretty soon they're going to be all over the world. That's right. Worldwide Louis. Start it, Norman. <laughs> going to go worldwide. Worldwide, and you're going to be a part of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Especially as a beer taster. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll be the food taster. You can be the beer taster. They'll take us worldwide. Anyway, having a lot of fun here on the patio at Louis Grill and Bar, 89th and Southwestern here in Oklahoma City. Now we start talking about the non conference schedule for OU, and everything basically hinges on Notre Dame, but I want to talk about. The other two games first, Louisiana Monroe, we talked about just briefly, but they've got a quality program at the University of Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, they do. They they, they got better. They they uh, competed really well last year against some uh, SEC teams, as you said, uh, beat Arkansas. Uh, yeah, they, they got a, a – and you know what, though? That, that serves a purpose that Bob Stoops if, – if, if they didn't do anything last year, getting these guys ready to play Louisiana Monroe, because, are you kidding me? Uh, so the fact that they did uh, play well and beat Arkansas last year uh, serves notice that Bob can get the team up for them. Well, you know, and that's what they're going to have to do. And, you know, and they went, not only did they beat Arkansas at Arkansas, but the next week they went to Auburn and lost in overtime. Should have so, I mean, won that game, too. Should have won that game. Yeah. Should have won that game. You know, now Auburn's not a great strike, but they're still SEC. Yeah. And they're three years removed from a national championship, or four years removed from a national championship coming this year. So, I mean, it's still a quality program. So they've got a solid coach. They were eight and five last. Louisiana Monroe was eight and five last year, and so it's going to be a good opening test. Yeah, I, I saw like somebody. I don't forget who it was. Uh, has OU only won it by a touchdown? So, uh, well, that'd be a tough game to handicap because OU never has done well in the opening games, yeah. you know. And this is a pretty pretty good opponent. Yeah, if you only win by a touchdown, the fans are going to go nuts around That's here. That's exactly right. They'll they'll riot in yeah. the, riot in memorial, so to speak. But uh, good opening game, and then. The second game, even though it's not a non-conference, West Virginia, I've, I don't remember 
an early conference game like this before. I can't remember either, Rick, where they, they played uh, a conference game, second game of the season. I really don't remember when that was. Well, you know, what's, they've done that in the SEC where they're trying to get because of TV. TV. You know, yeah. the TV wants early season. They don't want all non-conference powder puffs. You know, and cream puffs. So they want a good, solid. And I can't think of a better, a better uh, matchup than the second week of the season well, than and, West and, Virginia and, and OU. And West Virginia, a, a team last year that looked like it could contend for national championship. And boy, were they terrible the second half. They were a really bad football team the second half of the year. Well, you know, really bad. Yeah, and they they were up the number three or two. Yeah, or and they beat what Texas? Yes, I mean, and they looked so good, and they had. Geno Smith and Tavon Austin and Stedman Bailey. I mean, just three outstanding guys that will be playing on Sundays this coming fall yeah. for the NFL. So, don't know what happened to Dana Hogerson and his team. I can tell you what happened. One of the worst defense teams in the country. Well, I mean, you got to you gotta play defense, too. You know, you can score 50 points a game, but when you're giving up 60, uh, it's so they're really bad defensively. And remember Oklahoma. That was an incredible game last year. Landry Jones came back came and just back. played outstandingly. And, you know, and, and you, you'd like to have OU not be in that situation where they had a little bit better defense. They had defensive problems, too. Oh, my goodness. So uh, that was one of those games that you just looked at and go, wow, whoever has the, game, the ball last. Oklahoma only played one linebacker. And then so West Virginia goes, no, we're going to run the ball right down your throat. And they, it, was, it was a horrific defense performance well, by what, OU. Remember when, Horrible. They put, remember when they put Devon Austin in the backfield yeah. and running back? And, and I go, and something. why didn't you do that the rest of the year? Then he still doesn't do it, Hogerson. <laughs> yeah. that's, to me, that's stubbornness. That is. It, that, that, well, you know, and that's, that's a first-year coach, second-year coach, Dana Hogerson, doing that. He's got to learn you put your best players out there where they're going to touch the ball more often. I mean, he got over 400 yards, it, it, almost it, it was unbelievable. Yeah, in, in, in he individual just, offense. He's, so the one linebacker out there, they go, go, we're just going to run the ball down. And they down, just boom, throw. boom, And boom. OU's tackling was horrible. One of the worst defensive reports I've ever seen by an OU football I team. I what, if you want to keep an OU uh, defensive coach awake at night, just run that that uh, film back. That, 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 that would scare him to I, death I, I keep gar- him awake all night. I guarantee they won't play that same formation that they played last well, year. Well, they, they can't. I mean, there's just no way that you can do that. And we'll talk more about that later on. But, golly, West Virginia, tough matchup in the second game. Good. The good thing is, is they get a good game underneath their belt before West Virginia comes in. Then Tulsa at home. Tulsa, a pretty good team. Bill Blankenship got them contending for a title every you got to crush them. I mean, you got to beat this team by three or four. T- uh, uh, you know, Tulsa got a bunch of players that well, probably all their players, oh, you never even offer scholarship well, to. Well, Conference USA, guys, I mean, you know, and you say crush them by three or four touchdowns. You used to have a whole different definition for OU when we said crush them. Hang them 50 by half, you know. You're right. Hang 50 on them by halftime. Yeah. And now that, you know, even though they might have been able to do that offensively, they haven't been able to stop anybody defensively and, and, in a while. They're, they're a well-coached team. Blank Chips are, are a He's good done coach. A good He's done job. a good job. You know, and it's a solid program, yep. University of Tulsa. Hey, let me talk to you about Fitness Together in Norman. That's right. If you're wanting to get in the best shape of your life, Fitness Together will help you. They've got one client, one trainer, and one goal, and that is to get you in the best shape of your life. Fitness Together. Give them a call in Redbud Plaza, 310-3111. That's Fitness Together, the best shape of your life. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back to the summer version of the OU Football Preview Show. We're really previewing it out there. It's summer right now, and we're talking OU Football, which all OU fans want to do. It's after the 4th of July. You want to look forward to it. I mean, baseball's okay, but football is what runs the economy in Oklahoma. Well, yeah, I mean, they'll begin practice in August, and then August 31st, you play first game. Yeah, so it's time to talk about it. We're talking about it here at Louis. Grill and Bar on 89th and Southwestern. Louis all over the metro area, 22 of them now spread out throughout Oklahoma. Go by the neighborhood at Louis Grill and Bar. No food item over $10. Great drink specials every day of the week at Louis Grill and Bar, your neighborhood grill and bar. Let me also talk to you about World Imports. World Imports, great Western furniture, Western furnishings, art, all of that and more at World Imports on Reno, just west of Portland in Oklahoma City. If you're looking to furnish your house, your cabin, maybe your office, go to World Imports, great Western furniture, great Western furnishings and art, all available at World Imports on Reno, just west of Portland. Also, Manscaped, 
home of the haircut and the free beer. Also kind of like the body shop for men. Al, it's a great place. Haircut and the free beer, the body shop for men, Manuscape. Had a good looking woman doing your hair. That's right, and a good looking young lady doing your hair. You can't beat that. More than one beer available if you get more than one item. That's right, a haircut and a free beer at Manuscape. Next to Home Creations on Broadway in the middle of Moore. And also Green Acres. Have your lawn or acreage the envy of the neighborhood by having Green Acres take care of the maintenance, mowing, edging, and landscaping. They do home or commercial, all available with Green Acres. They'll take it care of it. They'll make it look beautiful like a golf course. They take care of my yard. They'll take care of yours the same way. That's Green Acres Mowing and Landscaping Company. Al, let's talk a little bit more about the, the, the uh, conference schedule, non-conference. We're talking Notre Dame now, and I don't know. You probably have a better idea of this, but Notre Dame was one of the few teams that has a dominant record against OU. Yeah, I mean, OU's only beat him once. That was during the 47-game winning streak uh, back in uh, 1950, uh, what, 50, uh, 56. 56. Yeah. Uh, that's the only time they've ever beat Notre Dame. It's unbelievable. And then Notre Dame ended the streak in 57. Um, it just, and you would thought last year with them coming here, no one expected Notre Dame to be any good, and they come in and beat Oklahoma. I mean, it just... Yeah, that was one of the probably the, the, the heartbreaking losses because, like you said, that cost OU a, a lot of spots in the in the BCS, and it kept them from having that national pub. And you know, and, and whether or not that was an interception by the by the linebacker or not, but regardless, they still won, and it was it was a game that they have to win this year if they have any national aspirations. Well, yeah, right now Notre Dame's a two point favorite, so if the game was played on neutral side, OU'd be favored against them. Uh, it's a game you got to go win. You got, you know, Notre Dame was one of the, they were the luckiest team in the country last year. Uh, you look at Pittsburgh should have beat them. Who else? I mean, they were about Pittsburgh three. Pittsburgh had them beat to the last yeah. minute. Uh, they were game at the game at the game that they lucked out and won. Then they come down here and they, they played a really good game. I mean, they, they had still offensively and they, they made some really nice plays. Yeah, uh, when, but, they, when they were on the 12-yard uh, line and go 88 yards to go score, I mean, that was impressive. That's when, that's when you know, I thought everybody in the stadium thought, wow, OU stops them here, they got the momentum, they score, boom, the game over with. They, didn't, they couldn't stop them, and they go down. Now, this year it's a little bit different. OU has an untested quarterback, and so does Notre Dame. I know. Well, they took a big blow, uh, you know, with uh, – I don't know what happened uh, academically, but – they got, but now they got a guy that did uh, start the year before, but got beat out last year. Yeah, he, so he's not he's not their best quarterback, or wasn't anyway last year. And now we got you know uh, what most people are speculating: Blake Bell being a quarterback for OU going into a you know for his first big uh, non-conference home. I mean, away game. That's going to be a tough environment. That, and, and remember, that's when Landry struggled on the road his first year. Sam Bradford was terrible at Iowa State in Colorado his first year on the road. So that's a very valid point of how these quarterbacks are going to play on the road. You know, and they've got to they've got to have some kind of game plan, and hopefully the the new offensive line coach and the new offense not the new offensive line, but the new offensive line coach can get the offensive line playing well enough that they can run the ball to take some pressure off of Blake Bell. Yeah, that, that and that's going to be a key because you know it's a, a really good offensive offensive line. We've got a good offensive line, so. I, I think one of the things they're going to do is, you know, come into the, the year just going, okay, let's run the ball. Let's We don't have a guy that can throw the ball like Landry Jones. Let's run the ball more. And see if they can be successful. And I think every OU fan would love to see a successful running game this year. No doubt. And and, and Notre Dame defensively, they, they're not going to be as good as they were a year ago. Yeah, they can't be with all that. But here, then comes up on the OU schedule, to me, the most important game on the schedule, and that's at home against TCU. Yeah, I, 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 the, the, the problem with OU got their, 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 their schedule is road schedule. Got to go to, got to go to uh, Notre Dame. Got to go to OSU. Got to go to Baylor. Got to go to Kansas State. Yeah, but, I mean, that, it's, it's unbelievable. And we'll talk more about th those tough games. Let me talk to you real quickly about Manscaped. That's right, Manscaped, the home of the haircut and a free beer next to Home Creations on Broadway in Moore, right off I-35. Manscaped, if you need a haircut, hand restoration, foot restoration, all that and more, and free beer while you get it done, and have a beautiful lady cut your hair. That's Manscaped on Broadway next to Home Creations and more. We'll be right back from Louis on 89th and Western after this. 
And welcome back to the summer version of the OU Football Preview Show. Al Esch back with you, Rick Heath. We are at Louis Grill and Bar on Western, excuse me, Southwestern and 89th here in Oklahoma City. Great place. I want to talk to you about some of the wonderful sponsors of the OU Football Preview Show, the Trails Golf Club in Norman. If you're looking for a great place for your family to have fun this summer, the Trails Golf Club offers that. Not only do they have great championship golf course to offer, they have a wonderful pool for the kids. They have lessons for a junior program. They have a great grill there with wonderful lunches and dinners, all available at the Trails Golf Club in Norman. For more information, give them a call at 360-1920. It's 360-1920, Trails Golf Club in Norman. Also, Green Acres. Whether you're commercial, real, uh, landscaping needs, or a home mowing needs, Green Acres can take care of it for you. They will make your yard beautiful like a golf course. That's Green Acres. Give them a call today for commercial or residential landscaping and mowing. Also, Fitness Together. Fitness Together, one goal, one trainer, one goal, one client. Get you in the best physical fitness possible for you. That's fitness together. Alice, I want to talk real quickly about why I think TCU is the most important game. OU opens up, Louisiana Monroe should win that one. They play West Virginia, should win that one because they're playing at home and West Virginia is kind of big. All right, in Tulsa. Then they go to Notre Dame. That's going to be a tough game to well, win. I think that's the biggest game of the season. We're going to we're going to know about this Oklahoma team, I think, at Notre Dame. But here's the, How good are they going to be or whatever? That's it. But here's why I think TCU is important. They play them at home. They may be coming off a loss. TCU's got that experienced quarterback coming back. It's their conference game. And they have such a tough closing schedule, like you pointed out in the last segment, that they got to get the wins when they can. And that's the one that they have well, to you win. Well, you got to win that. If you, you lose to TCU at home, I mean, you're uh, – your season is, uh, and that's why, and that's why I think it's so important to win that game because you don't want to go into Texas losing two in a row. That's know? why you got to beat Notre Dame. I mean, <laughs> that's why you got to. You're a two point underdog. You got to go beat Notre Dame. That makes your season right there. It sets. Well, it, it helps it, but it, it helps sets it. it up. Yeah, it because sets it if up. you lose in Notre Dame, then you, well, you said you got pressure that you could wind up losing three in a row. That's right, and you because, don't do you know, that. Because right now in Vegas, Texas is a one point favorite over Oklahoma. Notre Dame's a two-point favorite. Oh, he's favorite over TCU by touchdown. You, you mean you you got you got to win these games at your slight underdogs. And yeah, and you also got to win the games you should, and that's a TCU game. Yes. Because you're going into Dallas the next week, and you dang sure but, don't want to go. But that's in. why Notre Dame is. I mean, yeah. no, get, Notre Dame. Get, it sets up for momentum. Because if again, if you lose in Notre Dame, then that the TCU game. If you lost that, the people go nuts, and then you'd probably lose to Texas. That's what I'm saying. So you got to get those. In. But if you win Notre Dame and TCU, you go into Dallas. Rank somewhere momentum. high, absolutely. Yeah, great moment. We got. I tell you what, Rick. The early season schedule is difficult. The way it sets up, yeah. and, and then it's really difficult at the end of the year. Yeah, that's what. So after after <clears throat> Dallas, you have Kansas at home. No, you go to Kansas, excuse me. You go to Kansas, and then you, oh, let me get my notes here. You know, go to Kansas, then all the rest of them you have. Um, David Ash, you at Kansas, char uh, at home for Tech. Hello, Cliff Kingsbury, new coach there. Um, then off to Baylor, then Cyclones visit. Then OU has two of the toughest closing games in conference memory, and that at OSU, at, I mean at Kansas State, at OSU. Yeah, and Kansas State's a game you got to win. Kansas State. Totally rebuilding. I mean, uh, well, yeah, they lost Klein on offense. They, they, and Brown they lost. On they, they lost it like all kind of starters. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's it's going to be difficult. And uh, and you know, late in the year, uh, you beat up with injuries and things. So, well, see, but, that's the thing. What happened last year was they they collapsed on defense last year oh against those teams. Remember. Early in the year, they played well at Texas Tech. Remember how well the defense played? Yeah. They played tremendous against Texas on defense, and then, man, it just went away. <laughs> they had some. Of the, they had three of the last four games were three of the highest total yardage games ever put up against an OU defense. Just like the year before. In the history. Just like the year before. Yeah. I mean, and you can't do that. And Mike Stoops has got his work cut out for him because he has less less players to deal with and we'll talk about that more in, a, in another show but you know you got to play well because you've got those last two games at kansas state which you have to win and then at osu and depending on how their quarterback is playing they're an explosive offensive team that will give anybody trouble yeah. especially at home yeah it, it really you know the the, it, the schedule 
The fans love the non-conference playing the good teams, but it, it's tougher on the coaches, and that's why with the early season where you, where you where you got Notre Dame, TCU, and Texas right in a row. And, and I tell you, that, that TCU game is huge for TCU. Yeah. If they come to Norman and we go, okay, baby, we're going to win the Big 12. That's right. We have a chance. And a lot of people have picked them as a Big 12 contender. Uh, they, I tell you what, the thing that I'm sure they're not real happy about, they got to go to OSU two straight years. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing about the fall. And, out oh, of the you Big found that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's a tough thing to do. So, but it's going to be interesting, that, you know, see how it all works out. We love it. We're talking. It's the middle of summer, but we're talking OU football. And it's a lot of fun because we're talking OU football from Louis Grilling Bar on Southwestern and 89th, or Southwestern and 89th Street, a great place. Louis Grilling Bar, there's 22 of them around the state of Oklahoma, the neighborhood grill and bar. That's Louis. For Al Eschbeck, I'm Rick Heath. We'll see you next time on the OU Football Preview Show. Touchdown still. Touchdown, Oklahoma.